to set you up. We're going to go situation, one at a time, but all three situations, we're going to go through the same A, B, C, D. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a situation. You're going to write an inequality that describes your situation. So we're considering constraints. All right? Then, you're going to graph it. You can use Desmos and then uh, put it on your graph, but you might find it's easier just to graph it. Then, you're going to name one solution that fits your inequality and explain how you know and what it is in the situation. And lastly, at the end, your context has a question. You're going to answer that question. All right? The same ABCD, which you'll see listed the next page in your notes, goes for all three problems. And all three problems actually have two parts. You'll see what I mean. So you're going to need to reference these for each one of them. The first situation is about bank accounts. Raise your hand if you have like a checking or savings account. Okay? I'm thinking about getting one one day, you know? Um, I'm just joking. I have checking and savings accounts. This is really a thing that um, happens at banks. Most people have checking and savings. In fact, I have both, but I only have $5 in savings in case you were wondering. Okay? Not a joke. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because the interest in checking is higher than the interest in savings for some reason. But in order to have a checking account, they require you to have a savings account. So, basically, so I just have five bucks sitting in there all the time just so I can have the high interest checking. This, this is brought to you by Lake Michigan Credit Union. Okay, so make sure. Wait a minute. This, <laughs> Wait a minute. So here, again, A, B, C, D is what you're going to roll through for our context of this savings and checking account. It says you need to deposit a maximum of $600. Some in checking, some in savings. Okay? This is the question that you're going to answer, but that's after you've done A, B, C. So again, you're going to write a general inequality for your situation. You're going to graph it. You're going to claim one point that works, and then you're going to answer that question last. So this down here, last. This is D. Okay? Because it's pretty easy to see that and just go after that. All right? If you forget what A, B, C, D are, where could you look? Your packet, it's listed right at the top of your problem there. Let's go. For this checking account, who's got an inequality that works? Yeah, Micah. Uh, X plus Y is less than or equal to 600. And then we'd have to define like X as checking yeah. and Y as savings, okay? And then you probably graphed it. What's nice about this is if I went all checking, how much checking? And these are hundreds. I'm, I'm just going to let you know that. Okay, those are, those are hundreds. So all, all of one, all of the other, that works, okay? The intercepts are nice for graphing this one. And then does the line work? Does 600 work? Yes. Yep. So this line shows all the combinations that work to have exactly $600 or less. So how do I get that or less going? Got to get a little shady, right? With a shade under the line, all those values under the line also work. So the line or under the line. The next thing is said is, oh, yeah, question. Let's see. Some in the checking and some in, oh. So what you're saying is maybe those intercepts you're thinking wouldn't work because you'd have to have something even if it was just a penny? Yeah. Okay, I interpreted, okay. They will deposit some in each account. They might not deposit all of it. Keep some money as cash. I guess it doesn't say that it can't all be in one account. But you're, So you would still want the line everywhere but the points then? Is what you're saying if you did it? Because that'd be the line 600. So I actually have never seen this before. If we tried to do that, if we interpreted it that way, maybe an open, open down on those? Maybe. But the intent here is that we could have all in one currently. But thanks for bringing that. I really appreciate that you brought that up. I might need to check with somebody to see if open point on a linear inequality is a thing. We'll see. Because I don't know the answer to that. And now I want to know the answer because I like knowing the answers to things. So, here we are. We've got the inequality. We've got the graph. It says pick a combination that works. Who's got a combination that works for me? Eliana? 300, 300. Oh, you're maxing it. I like that. Max it out, right? What happens uh, no money? Keep it all in your pocket. That work? Not if there has to be some in each, like we were talking about with Charlotte, but in theory, it could work. It's 600 or less. What about 100, 300? 
Yeah. So pretty much any combination you had in context, and then you said that means something like 100 in checking and 300 in savings or something like that, okay? Everybody good on that? Now, let's answer the question. If there's 200 in checking, what do we know about savings? How do you know that? Less than or equal to $400. So you went right here. You said 200 in 200, 400 would put me right on the line. 200 in checking, 400 in savings. So if I had 400 in savings or less, that, that's one condition, right? Look where these two things overlap, guys. This is kind of fun. This is where it meets both conditions. $400 or less, as well as 600 or more, or 600 or less. If you're up in here, doesn't hit that 400, I mean that 200, that's kind of cool, huh? Are you guys seeing that? The two conditions, the condition we start with with the general, and this more serious, or not serious, but the second condition of, you know, why is it going to be less than or equal to 400, it, where it overlaps is our answer. Okay. Cool. Let's look at uh, the next part about checking and savings. You're going to do the same thing, A, B, C, D. This one requires a minimum balance of $50 in savings. It does not matter how much money is in the checking account. Okay? Let's just roll through this one together, actually. If the customer deposits no money in checking but is able to maintain both accounts without penalty, what can you say about the amount deposited in savings? So, what's the inequality that I can write about this 50 bucks? Yeah, well, X was checking, Y was savings, right? So 50, no, well, the balance of 50 in the savings. So savings, Y needs to be what compared to 50? Greater than or, yeah, minimum is 50. So that works. There's my savings account, right? If the customer deposits no money in checking account but is able to main with both, what can you say about the amount deposited in savings? It's 50 or more, right? So if we're going to graph this, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, does 50 work? No. Yeah. 50 works. And what else works? More or less than 50? More. More. So everything up here. That makes sense. Okay. But you would also need to consider this. This doesn't keep the same 600 requirement. Yeah. What would you do about X? You, there's not. It just says it has to have more than 50. So X could be anything. Zero dollars in checking all the way up to infinite. You just have to maintain this $50 in savings. How would you implement X into that inequality? There is, no, there is none in this condition. X would have to be if there was a condition. If there was a condition based on checking, then we would. But this is just, if there's 50 in savings, the checking could be anything. Got it. Yep. Cool. Next situation. We're going concerts. Lawn seats and regular seats, okay? Um... Fewer than 400 tickets in total were sold. If you know that exactly 100 tickets were sold, how about the number of seat tickets? So again, you're gonna to wanna to jump right to the question. A is going to be write an inequality. B is going to be graph it. C is going to be pick a point. And then D is going to be this. So you're waiting on that until D, all right? Get after it. All right, so who's got the inequality for me? A. Um, Will it? Okay, so the general one is just going to be up here. So that's going to be X plus Y needs to be less than 400. So that's lawn and regular seats. 400 doesn't work. So these are going to go by hundreds. One, two, three, four hundred. Okay. Is everybody good with what I'm doing there? And if I go all one or all the other, it'd be right there. Okay? Then, this line needs to be dashed. Because does 400 work? No, 400 does not work. Okay? Then, less than 400 seats, I'm going to shade above or below? Below. Then... We're going to pick a point. So who's got, who's got a, a combination of seats that works for me, Finn? 100, 100. 100, 100 works. That means 100 lawn and 100 uh, regular seats gets us under 400 seats still. Okay. Now let's work on answering it. D, 
If there's 100 lawn tickets, what do we know about seat tickets? Micah? Uh, that they have to be 399 or less because we have to, or 299 or less because we have to keep it under 400. Yeah, what I'm going to say is um, less than 300, okay? Mm -hmm. So X is lawn, which means Y would need to be less than 300. I'm going to graph that right here. Dash line. And if I'm below that, look where I double cross. Anywhere in there will give me something where I have less than 300, but also the combination is less than 400. Well, but also, wouldn't you then when you do the 100 thing? The 100, yeah, but that's any, oh, anything yeah, but, yeah. where they double cross would satisfy both those things, which I think is pretty cool. Let's look here. Now our inequality deals with money. So I've got 30 per lawn plus 50 per seat, and they need to make at least 14 grand. That's a lot. Yeah, and then I sold 200 of the 50. Okay. Well, I'm going to start by graphing this. And this is a little tricky because the x-intercept, I don't think, is, is not nice. The x-intercept is 466 and two-thirds. So that's going to be like somewhere like in here, which we'll just do that. Okay. The y-intercept is going to be nicer. 14,000 divided by 50. 280. So something like right here. Okay. And does does the line work for this? Yeah, fourteen thousand dollars works. I need to earn more than fourteen thousand dollars though, so I'm shading above. Next, if there's exactly two hundred seats, I guess we forgot to pick a point that works. So if we want to make more than $14,000, anything in the shaded area or on the line would work, right? You guys all go with that? So if 200 seat tickets were sold, seat is Y, that means I'm left with only lawn. You guys follow that? So really what that's saying is lawn tickets need to be, I need to sell more than, this would be $10,000. So I need $4,000 or more in lawn tickets. Are you guys seeing that? Yeah. Which means... Four thousand. This isn't going to work super nice, though. 133 and a third. Yeah. 150. So check this out. Here's the line. The line works, actually. Where X is 133 and a third. Line works. Where are these going to double cross? Uh, 100 Am I going more than or less than this line? More than. More than. More than yeah, so check out where they double cross. Kind of looks like Everywhere in this region. Anywhere in that region, what I will get oh, is I'm making $14,000 or more, and I'm selling 133 and a third or more. Tickets. Now, can you actually sell 133 and a third tickets? No, you have to no. sell 100. You'd have to sell the 134. Well, you could always buy an extra ticket, and then the guy could cut it into three parts. And then it's not worth any. It just you die. Well, no, yeah, you sold you it. Buy that, and then you cut I guess you still sold it, huh? Last premise for the day: advertising. Okay. There's a basic package and a premium package that this company sells, um, and they need to sell 60 packages in total. You're going to go through the same thing: A, B, C, D. So remember, A is going to be inequality. Got it. B is going to be graph. Got it. C is going to be pick a point. Don't got it. And D? Is going to be... D is going... Sorry, I just heard something. So D is going to be answer the question. All right, go. Who's got an inequality for me for these basic and premiums? All right, Stella. Um, would be 45 plus B is greater than or equal to 60. Okay, so you jump to the question, which you weren't here for the, the flow of the hours. That's great. So it's, it's this, and you, so you're going to be able to follow it. Basic plus premium needs to be greater than or equal to 60. Okay, basic plus. And we would say that this is basic and this is premium, right? So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 
60. So the intercepts are 60. Do the intercepts work? Can I sell 60 of each? Or uh, sorry, 60 of one or 60 of the other, yes. And I need to sell at least that much, right? So I'm gonna shade above. Uh, who would like to give me a point that works for selling more than 60? Any point works, Raymer. 100, 100. That's not on my graph. I like how you did that. Somewhere up here. Okay, thanks, Raymer. 100, 100. Anything where the combination of the two XYs gives you 60 or more. What about something like 30 and 30? Does that work? Yep, yep that works too. 30 of each works, 60 or more. Right? <laughs> I don't know why. That's a 40. Thanks for pointing that out, Will. <laughs> okay. So, next up. Now we're going to answer the question. The question says 45 basic packages. That would require that we sell how many uh, premiums? 15. So, premiums, right, which is why. Why needs to be greater than or equal to? 15. So check this line out. So if right here is 15, oh, it's not, let me do my nice line. We can sell greater than or equal to that, right? So that would be everything above this line. But this region through here is where the both would be true. So anything in that region will satisfy both those. Not only is it more than 15 or more premium packages, it has the combination of 60 or more premium and non-premium. Emmett, home stretch. So these advertising packages cost money, okay? It's not free to advertise. So we've got um, 1,000 for the cheap one, so 1,000X. We got 2,500 for the premium, 2,500Y. And we need to sell more than $60,000. So does 60000 work? No, more than sixty. So it has to be greater than $60,000. All right, so let's graph it. 1000 goes into 60000 how many times? 60. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Not 45, right? There we go. And then 60,000 divided by the 25,000, that gives us, or 2,500. 60,000 divided by 2,500, 24. So 10, 20, 30. 24 is right about there. And does the line work in this case? Nope, it has to be more than this line. It has to be more than 60. So if it has to be more than that line, we're going to be looking up in this range, right? Cool? And then any point up here works. Does the line work? Does the line work? No, because no, the line's 60,000. It has to be more than that. If 10 premiums are sold, how much money? If 10 premiums sold, that's $25,000, right? So all that 60,000, we've got 35,000 left. Oh, you're almost there. Is everybody good with this inequality I wrote? Because yeah. if I take away how much on premium, so now how many basics would I need to sell? 35. I need to sell, well, more than, more than 35. 35 basics. Wow, that was real ugly. Yeah. Okay, so more than 35 does not work. So if I'm going to go where I'm more than 35, I'm going to go dashed right here. Here's, here's where 35 basics is. And if I'm going to go more than that, am I looking left or right of that line? Right. To the right. And look where these things overlap. All up in here. So anything up in there, but not on a dashed line, is going to work to satisfy making more than $60,000 and selling more than 35 basics. That's that. Multi multiple conditions. Now we're going to have multiple regions uh, that answers. Yeah, that's why we need the drawing. Double shades where it's at, man.